Hey, how you doing? Today, we're going to take a quick look at The Irishman, directed by Martin Scorsese and starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Al Pacino. This is based on a true story, though how much truth there is in this story depends on who you ask. It's the story of Frank Sheeran, a former teamster, hitman, and close friend of Jimmy Hoffa, who may or may not have played a role in his disappearance. Of course, this one had a lot of buzz, as it's the latest film from legendary filmmaker Scorsese, has an incredible cast, and it hit Netflix while it was still playing in a lot of theaters. And I'm sure this will surprise no one, but there is a lot of good stuff going on in this movie. Scorsese is one of the best filmmakers of all time. I'm a fan of his work. Obviously, we have different tastes when it comes to Marvel, which is fine. And really, I think we all need to move on from that. And he still has not lost his touch. He is a master at his craft. It is very well acted, and I would expect nothing less from this cast. De Niro is as great as he always is. Pesci's performance, I think, surprised me more than anything else. This is a much more reserved Joe Pesci than I am used to seeing, and it certainly shows he can indeed play more than one type of character, and he was fantastic. As for Pacino, I think this may very well be his best work yet. A lot of times with really well-known actors, it can be kind of difficult to look past the actor and see the character, and especially with someone like Pacino, I have had this problem before. Not here. No, anytime I looked at him on screen, like, yeah, that's Jimmy Hoffa. Anna Paquin probably could have been great had they given her more than seven words to say. She was very good at staring, I will give her that much. She stared the hell out of Robert De Niro. Probably could have done more, but oh well. And it is a very interesting story about one of the most notorious characters in American history told through the eyes of someone who was very close to him. There are moments that are funny, there are moments that are intense, there are gangsters doing gangster shit, which is definitely in Scorsese's wheelhouse. And the work they did with digital de-aging on De Niro and Pesci so they could play the same characters in different time periods was just amazing. It is mind-boggling just how far that tech has come. So with all this good stuff happening in this movie, I've been trying to figure out why I didn't like it as much as I did. It's not that I think the movie is bad. I want to make that very clear. This is a good movie. I didn't think it was that good. And I think my issues with this movie boil down to two things. Number one, it's a mob movie directed by Martin Scorsese, starring guys like Pacino and Pesci and De Niro and... I just, I feel like I've seen this before. There's really no new ground being broken here apart from the de-aging tech. And the second problem is, it's just too damn long. It really is. I've said before that the length of a movie should be as long as it needs to tell its story. This did not need three and a half hours. Throughout this movie, we keep jumping back and forth between different timelines, and in one of those timelines, De Niro and Pesci's characters and their wives are traveling from Philadelphia to Detroit for a wedding, and there's this running gag about how they keep having to stop like every two minutes because their wives need a smoke break, and I felt that was rather appropriate because it seemed like this movie kept stopping for smoke breaks. There are some moments in this movie that are really, really slow, and one that really stands out in my memory is the scene that takes place just before Sheeran may or may not have killed Jimmy Hoffa. We see his plane landing at the airport, and he gets out of the plane and gets into a car, and he's driving down the road with a road map, trying to find his way to this house, still driving, still driving, still driving, finally gets to the street he needs to be at, Turning down the street very slowly, it is residential, very slowly, slowly driving down the street, looking at the map, looking at the house numbers, looking, 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 okay. And then he finally gets to the house, he parks in front, he gets out of the car, he walks up to the door, walks inside the house, says hi to some of the guys in the house, walks to the back, says hi to a couple more guys, grabs one of them to go get Hoffa, and they walk out to the car, da 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 they get in the car, they drive back down that same street, turn the corner, drive down to the hotel, loop around the goddamn driveway, they pick up Jimmy Hoffa, they drive back down the street, turn back around that corner very slowly. Did we need to see all of this? God.
That sequence alone felt like it took three and a half hours. That could have easily been cut down. If Scorsese was going to take this goddamn long to tell this story, then it really should have been a miniseries instead of a movie. If this had been broken up into four or five chunks, I think it would have been much more palatable. And if you absolutely have to make it a movie, then I'd say this is a good argument for having intermissions during movies. I mean, if you're watching this at home on Netflix, then you can create your own intermission anytime you want. That's what the pause button is for. But when you're in a theater, you don't have that luxury. And three and a half hours is a long time to sit in a theater, even if they got those fancy new reclining seats. After all, they have intermissions in theater. Why don't they have it with movies? In fact, they used to. Once upon a time, that was not all that uncommon an occurrence, and they really need to bring that back, especially if you're going to have a movie that is three and a half goddamn hours long. So, like I said, The Irishman is good. Perhaps not as good as it could have been, but Pacino is doing some of his best work, the de-aging tech looks phenomenal, and it's Scorsese being Scorsese. And if you have Netflix, you really have nothing to lose except three and a half hours of your time, so I would say it is worth a watch. And that's all I got to say about The Irishman. Till next time, take care.